Hi everybody, and welcome to a really gay episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So, what makes this episode so gay? Well, let's take a look back and find out. Ripping into it. What have we got? Frisk. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Frisk. This movie was recommended to me by the guy who recommended coming soon to me. So you know it's got to be good. He told me that it made him feel really sick and empty and quite disgusted. And it disturbed him pretty deeply. And I said, would it be something good to do on the show? And he said, well, it's not as extreme as this guy's writings. I said, oh, he writes stuff? What's he write? And he said, one in particular is called The Sluts. That's right, everybody. The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. Dennis Cooper wrote a book that was turned into a movie called Frisk. This is Frisk. Before we get to Frisk, would you like an example of some of the fucked up shit that is in this book? You would? Perfect! Let's go to Reader's Corner and do a little bit of reading. Welcome to Reader's Corner! I'm Mr. Books! Today we're gonna be reading from Dennis Cooper's The Sluts. He smelled and tasted like a boy should. This is written about a 13 year old, by the way. I gave him a good finger stretching and then started burying bigger and bigger dildos into his ass. I used a stun gun on his groin until tears and snot were running down his face. I cut him with a knife and whipped and beat his whole body until there was nothing I could do that would stop the bleeding. I squirted lighter fluid on his genitals and ass and lit them on fire a couple of times. I couldn't hold it in any longer and I practically drowned his face with the biggest load I ever shot in my life. So as you can see, Dennis Cooper is very fucked up. I carried the semi-conscious young man into the bedroom. We sat him down on the bed and I emptied the contents of the testicle sack into his mouth, then taped the mouth shut. His years as a heavy bottom have damaged his asshole beyond repair. I recommend doing him with the lights on because you can stretch the elastic and look all the way into his beautiful pulsing guts. The Sluts is Cooper's most transgressive novel since Frisk. So Frisk and the Sluts are equally fucked up? My secret fantasy is to rape, torture, and kill Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys. You guys ready to watch this? Play feature. So Frisk opens up with a guy named Dennis writing a letter to his best friend Julian. He says, if I don't get this shit out of my system, I'm gonna go crazy. So he starts writing about how we bashed a bottle over some twink's head and killed him. I ground the broken bottle into his face, really twisting and shoving it in. And I just sat there watching him bleed today. We then see Julian and his brother Kevin reading this note in a train. Dennis goes on to tell them this story about how when he was 13, he would go to this bookstore and the clerk would let him look at all the dirty magazines. One day, the clerk asked him if he'd like to see something more extreme. And Dennis says, yeah, sure, why not? And the clerk hands him a, it's a huge book. He just opened it up and saw like the moving black and white image of a guy with plastic over his head. I didn't understand. Head. It was like someone had set off a bomb inside of him. I didn't think for a second that they could be posed or fake. I didn't want them to be. In the note, Dennis says to Julian, Remember when you picked up that fucked up drug dealer, Henry? Henry shows up at their door and Dennis recognizes his face immediately. It was him, the guy from the snow photos, alive. I was pretty sure that if we were able to tear him open, we would know him as well as anyone could. Except there'd be a smell that would be strong and hard to take. Piss, shit, sweat, vomit, blood, cum, all combined. We'd eat and drink it all without getting nauseous. That was my dream anyway. Dream big, everybody. Isn't this fucked up? If I had a knife, I'd have torn him to pieces. The two men are just making out over the guy's passed out body. Dennis drags him to the doorway and Henry stands up and says, well, I guess I better split. Dennis asks him, were you ever in some snuff pictures? Henry says, yeah, I'd do anything for anyone if they're nice to me. Bye. And he walks out. 
The next day, we see Julian packing up a suitcase. So one of the lunatics is leaving for Paris. In the letter, Dennis tells Julian that after he left for Paris, he started up a relationship with his brother Kevin. Dennis says that in order to get it up while fucking Kevin, he had to pretend that he was saving him or raping him. Dennis confesses that Kevin was too much of a handful, so he goes out to San Francisco in search of a porn star who you can rent out by the hour. I set up an appointment with no intention of letting him go. Dennis asks him to... Could you spit in my mouth? Cough up as much as you can. Cough up as much as you can? Yuck! Not gross to the meat holes. And right after it shows that gross spit scene, it shows the toilet lid flipping up really quick. And you hear Dennis call out, Whatever you do in there, don't flush. I gotta say, it is really nice to see gay, violent, fucked up movies, you know? Dennis tells this porn star hustler about Henry and how he never heard from Henry again until he read about him in the newspapers. This is when Henry's fate plays out before us. So, as you can tell, this movie jumps around a lot. Henry pulls a number out of his drawer of numbers and he calls one up and says, I, I heard that you supposedly like to whack guys around. Yeah. The guy says, I sure do, come on over. And Henry does exactly that. The guy lights a bunch of candles and ties Henry up to a stake in a room that looked like the room where Hershey's Kisses was filmed. He just took out this huge knife. He looks like Zack from Hide and Go Shriek. The guy takes out a knife and starts rubbing it all around Henry's chest while Henry begs for his life. This only turns the guy on more and he starts saying, I'm really gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. Oh, he just put the knife on his chest and inserted it and is kissing his neck and killed him. Dennis then explains in the letter to Julian that he started writing letters to the porno star because he seemed to like his stories. In the first letter, he talks about picking up a hustler and putting him through hell. I shoved one hand down his throat, one up his ass, and shook hands with myself. It sounds funny, but it wasn't. That's for real. fucked up. The porn star slash hustler's girlfriend gets a hold of these letters and she says, We should be saving these. They could be worth a lot if he's really doing it. But what killer would be stupid enough to write in his return address? The girlfriend says, We need to break into his house and find out for sure if he's actually serious about all this shit. So they go to his house and break in. They're in his apartment, snooping around. He certainly is neat. And that's all the proof she needs to confirm that he's actually a killer. She thinks it's true now because he's so neat. They leave and later that night we see a hustler laying on Dennis's bed. His voiceover talks about strangling the man to death and how it took a very long time. A few days later, the porn star and his girlfriend receive a... New letter. She's reading the letter. I just oh. opened him up. Like a kid would take apart a toy. Studying every slimy organ and tube and all that weird moisture and muscle until he was just this giant white seashell full of horrible beyond belief crap. They're showing bloody hands being washed. And the porn star grabs the paper and crumples it up and he says, you know, fuck all this violent shit. We don't need it anymore. The notes then shift back to Julian, where Dennis says, I couldn't believe what I did. I needed witnesses, accomplices, helpers. And this is when Parker Posey comes into it. I like knives are the gory, but at least they're silent. They're so messy and, and bloody and smelly. So Parker Posey and this guy become Dennis's accomplices. We officially joined forces that night. They then bring in a very fucked up Alexis Arquette who is playing a straight man, a hustler. Nice place. Nice place. Remember when Alexis Arquette used to play straight people, like in Miracle Beach? They inject him with heroin and start to abuse him. Now the guy slapped him in the face. Oh, she just went down, pulled down his pants, and his cock was just in Parker Posey's face. They keep him lifted off the ground, and he's so fucked up he can't defend himself as they're picking at his face and slapping him. It was like Uncle Goddamn all over again. Parker and the other guy are like trying to hold him up. I'd say this is the longest of all the cruel scenes in this movie. I had no idea this movie was about psychotic killers. 
They're crazy. They continue to poke at his face and start taunting him. Hi! Hey. Hi! Hey, baby. Hi, sweetie. Sweetie? Eventually they... They just let him go and drop to the ground. Dennis takes out a wad of cash and... <gasps> and he just stuck money up his asshole. So Dennis begins to rape him as Parker and the guy watch. Parker says, I'm gonna get some more beer, and she leaves. She looked at the guy and said, don't finish him off without me. Parker Posey's now walking across the street to go get more beer. She gets what she needs from the gas station, then asks the clerk if there are any security cameras in the store. When he says no, she takes out a gun. She just took out a gun and shot the fucking clerk. So after killing that totally innocent clerk, she returns to the apartment where Alexis is laying down on the ground in a puddle of I just got raped. Alexis done getting fucked, he just spit and said, can I go now? And Parker returned with the beer. Did I miss anything? Here's a gross looking scene for you. Ugh, yuck, oh God. Fucking gross. The man says deviously, I think someone should hang him from the rafters. So they do. What do you want me to struggle more? Dennis takes out a knife and eventually stabs Alexis in the stomach. We then move on to the next day where we see Dennis picking up their next young victim. He gets him into his apartment and the three attack. Parker asks, How old is he? 16. He doesn't look 16. The guy then starts to videotape this little adventure on a very weird looking camera. What the fuck kind of camera is that? The black and white parts were pretty effective, I thought. It actually looked like something that a serial killer would be filming. I want to open him up. His ass was so little and perfect. It reminded me of Kevin. Kevin, if you don't remember, is Julian's brother. Oh, God. Yeah. Pete handed me the knife. I made a long, straight flip from his throat to his stomach. His chest was rising and falling. The insides were much more science fictional than I imagined. When I ran my cock down there, it came out coated with blood. We turned the kid over and it got sloshed out onto the floor. There was no way he was still alive. I wiped the blood off his ass as best I could and licked it for quite some time. God, people are such garbage bags. Is that it? Camera turned off. The brothers finish reading the letter and it's revealed that they are on their way to go meet Dennis. They get to the train station and wait until he shows up. And the three of them met up. They go back to Dennis's apartment and Julian hands Dennis the pile of letters and says, what's with all the fiction? And Dennis confesses, well, I did embellish a little. And by a little, he means a lot. He hasn't killed anybody. He made it all up. I must admit that was one of my uh, embellishments. Kevin says, hey Julian, can you leave? I want to talk to Dennis alone. So Julian leaves and Dennis says, I said, I need you to help me with something. And now the brother is, they're just showing his legs and he's on a garbage sack that's spread out on the floor like a tarp and his feet are being bound together with duct tape. The brother's laying there tied up. Dennis just put a plastic sack around his head and he's wrapping the tape around the plastic sack and the, it, and the kids in there like, ah. He took, he's taken out a camera, taking pictures of it. Just like the pictures he saw as a kid. The pictures that started it all. And he's cutting his shirt off with scissors. Cutting off his pants and the flash of the camera. Black and cast. So that was Frisk. That was a pretty interesting movie, wasn't it? It sure was. So what do I give Frisk on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a four. It was good. I, rec I recommend it to everybody, gay or straight. If you're looking for some dirty, sleazy fun, check out this movie. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.